boom, I'm telling you right now, there is opportunities everywhere. Everyone is wondering, how do I bring more parts back? How do I make it my own parts? Figure it out, go sell them on your vision and change your life and change your company's future, change your employees' lives and give them an experience they've never had before. Marry them, lock in, dig your roots, boom, go get it. Right now, there's turmoil, but there's opportunity in the turmoil. There are all these companies, there are all these customers that are wondering how can they bring, they know that they need to bring their work back. They know they need to machine their parts right here in the USA, or if you're in Australia, UK, you know, Brazil, wherever you're at, they know that they need to have their parts running in-house or right down the street from where they assemble their product. Look at it, look for the opportunity, educate yourself, on the manufacturing process, educate yourself on the right types of machines, educate yourself on the automation, educate yourself on robots, educate yourself on the full process, all variables in it, and get creative with your approach, with your vision, and go to the customer that you're only making five parts for, that you've been consistent with, and sell them on your ability to solve their problems. And that, my friend, is a way to scale your company in a way that allows you to do it securely because your roots are dug into it. You end up having blanket orders that are for years to come and you just take over their manufacturing, but you do it right here. Now, can you just make parts? No. You gotta figure out how to make a hundred parts at a time instead of six parts in a machine. You gotta figure out how to run lights out nonstop. You gotta figure out how to completely automate the process. You gotta figure out how to buy material in volume, buy tooling in volume. You have to figure out how to look at the tooling and actually figure out how to actually get it automated so you're checking the parts in the machine during the production, inspecting them, and actually calling using tool management to call up new tools from outside the machine to take the place of the tool that's running to actually keep machining non-stop. So everything is about the green light, everything is about non-stop machining and figuring out fixturing. And when you figure out the fixturing, you're figuring out how to actually take 30 different parts, run it on a single machine with standard tooling that works for all the parts. And then you can go from part to part to part to part. And you cut out the setup, you bring your costs down, you pass those savings on to your customer. And the focus is not to do five parts for them, it's to do all their parts and to do all their parts in a way that they cannot live without you because you have designed incredible tooling, incredible fixtures, incredible automation, and, and there's so much work that has gone into the setup that now you're positioned to just have inexpensive parts coming off the machine just in time when they need them to solve their problems and nobody else can compete because they don't have the opportunity to actually retool like you did. They don't have the opportunity to actually start the race at the same time you did. So you're beating them. So you are in a winning position and there's no way they can catch you from behind. I've been through a lot and, <laughs> and I've talked about a lot, but now is the time. Now is the time that I've been talking about. I went through incredible turmoil. I went through the craziest valleys. I went through all of it. but each time I came out stronger. And in business, in business, you look for opportunities during the trials, during the downfalls, because that's when you have the most severe problems. And when you can solve problems, that's where you will find success. You solve people's problems and you will be successful. Years ago, we came through COVID all of a sudden, you couldn't even get toilet paper, you couldn't get anything. Supply chain all of a sudden had, there was kinks in the armor and people couldn't get their products and everyone was thinking, how do I actually bring my work back to do it ourselves so we can control our own destiny and control our own parts? Not be subject to all the world's problems and, and all that. Well, right now we're going through it again. And now you have tariffs and you got some big tariffs. You got some that have been put on uh, pause and 
you got a lot of negotiation that's going to happen. And I, I truly believe that we're actually going to come out better for it. We're going to come out with, with fair and free trade. And that's when both sides are equal. If you tax it 10%, we're going to tax it 10%. If you tax it zero, we're going to do zero. And that's not just tariffs. That is regulations. That's all the different taxes. Everything that, that another country would do to keep your products out of their country, basically, we're going to do the same. So how about we actually not play the game and go to zero across the board and actually just truly have fair and free trade so that's that's the goal right here but at the end of the day we learn lessons that there is problems with manufacturing parts in other countries there's problems with manufacturing anywhere else but right down the street or in your own building because you are not in control of your product and therefore there's a chance that you will fail so we want to make sure that we take away that chance. One time, I was, I was working with Schilling Robotics, and some of you guys know this uh, story, but I'll just say it really quick. We were making such incredible parts for Schilling, and, and I had figured out that if I actually run three shifts and I keep my, my numbers low on the hourly rate, I'll go by volume instead of char overcharging per hour, I'll go uh, based on volume, and then, I will actually just pass all that savings on to my customer. And what happened? What happened was I actually had consistent work. I had consistent work through the whole thing, you know? So for the first couple of years, I was just saving this company incredible money. We were delivering incredible parts. Uh, I knew nothing about water jets, but the company actually was having problems getting their water jet parts. And then the company that was doing their water jet parts was actually scrapping the parts and then not giving them on time. So the owner, Tyler Schilling, actually came to me and said, hey, do you know anything about water jet? I said, absolutely. <laughs> I never had it. I knew about it. I'd seen it at the machine tool shows, but I actually didn't know that much about it. But hey, it's like 2D and we're doing crazy parts. So I knew that I could figure it out. So I said, hey, give me a little time and I'll actually go and uh, I'll give you a quote for all of your water jet parts. There was trust built up. We had actually come to a place right there where I had dug my roots in because of the contracts that we had put in place. We had delivered nonstop with this company. They, they had their own machine shop, but they simply couldn't do all the work. So I was an hour away and I just started nailing all their parts. So basically I went online, I learned about WaterJet, I watched every video I could, and back then there wasn't a lot of videos, and then I talked to a company called Flow, and talked to the sales guy, picked his head, I quoted out the machines, looked at the technology, looked at the sizes, looked at the you know dynamic five axis machines that took the taper away so that you had nice straight cuts and all that. And basically I quoted it. I actually looked at the material. I looked at how to store the material. I did the whole thing. And where Tyler thought I was coming back with just a quote for parts, I actually came back and I gave him a vision of an in-house company for him in my shop. It was my shop, but basically it would be his machine that he would purchase, that he would put into my facility, and then he would purchase the material and, and do all of it. And basically I would just charge him a rent fee and a labor fee to actually run the machines consistently. And he said, yes, he said, yes. So basically he bought the machine, we built a 10,000 square foot water jet facility and we took over all the water jet parts for Schilling Robotics and, and that was how I grew into water jet cutting. Now over my 20 years in business, I've come up with a lot of different creative ways to actually solve my customers' problems. And each time that I solved the problems, I was digging my roots into the company and basically we were creating a family, a partnership that would last years and years and years. So right now is the time that you do the same. And that's one of the reasons that I love business. You can, you can have nothing, you can come from nothing, but if you put the work in, you have the tenacity, like you grind, 
You actually machine incredible parts. You think about the details. You take care of your customers. Deliver jewelry on time, under budget, and just make it happen in a consistent way. You can build a crazy relationship and then people listen to you. Because those guys, your customers behind the desk, they don't understand CNC machines. They don't understand how everything runs. They just understand the product that they have to sell, all the components that go into that product and the price that they need those to be. So if you can beat that price and give them a plan to do it right here in the great United States of America, they will partner with you and help you change your company's future. So let's go solve those problems and make it happen. Boom. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Boom.